Kingsmill, um, I interviewed your colleague, Richard Black, about a China transition review that came out a couple of weeks ago. And one of the points he made there is that the uh, China is acting as a model for much of the global south. They're looking at, well, what happens if we scale up our you know, renewables? What happens if we scale up demand with, with heat pumps and, e and EVs? And this idea that, that it, we, we in the West still think that the emerging you know, global south, the emerging markets will copy uh, our progress through fossil fuels is not playing out in reality, is it? Yeah, I mean, it's quite patronizing, actually, the, the, the idea that, you know, that they're going to make the same mistakes we made 40 years ago. Um, uh, look, I mean, the same way as every other um, country or every other technology ship, people will do whatever suits them in the moment. And and therefore, they will embrace and, and deploy the cheapest technology, which they can buy in 2025. And that just so happens in 2025, cheapest technology is solar and wind electrification technologies. So that's what people are doing. And what we found, and we did this quite interesting analysis, and to our astonishment, we found that actually this 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 leapfrog is happening far quicker than anyone expected. So if you take the internet, there are these very clear lines of of internet deployment, uh, uh, the share of population uh, which is using the internet, and you get an absolutely classic line: the U.S. is first, and then it's Japan, and then uh, it's Europe, and then it's China, and you know then it's South America, and you know eventually at the bottom you've got sadly. Um, you know, uh, regions like Southeast Asia or Africa or South Asia or Africa. Um, this time round, folks, it's quite different. Um, and people are actually deploying these these technologies decades before they were expected to. Um, and, and you're getting these. I mean, we have these two numbers we've been running with recently, which I think are both astonishing that two thirds of the emerging markets have leapfrogged the United States uh, in terms of electricity as a share of uh, demand. Um, now, that's 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 two thirds by demand. So therefore, it's somewhat skewed by the fact you've got India in there. But nevertheless, you've got places you know as, as, as far flung as, as as Chile and Thailand and South Africa and India, which actually electricity is sorry, so does the share of electricity generation is higher than in the United States, the world's most advanced country right now, which is astonishing. Um, and then the second vector of change, which is electrification. Uh, you've got one quarter of the emerging markets is already more highly electrified. That is to say, electricity is a share of final energy demand than in the US. And to be clear, I, I was reading a very brilliant history of uh, electrification in, in the United States. I mean, in 1940, the United States were basically made by electricity half, it was half of global electricity demand. Now it's been leapfrogged by Bangladesh. Um, it's just incredible uh, how, how these countries are, 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 are electrifying their end use um, d demand and what's most notable is that it's been stagnant in the west for for a generation 15 or 16 years since 2008 and that includes in canada where i just checked the numbers got from 22 percent to 23 percent in 15 years um and uh, 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 in asia in, in particular countries basically electrifying at 10 percentage points per decade um and they've just overtaken the west and they're heading straight for 30 percent and then 40 this is this is an absolutely astonishing um, story of, of, of rapid electrification and change. Are we seeing a symmetrical or an asymmetrical electrification? Uh, because uh, I know in the oil uh, demand modeling studies, for instance, OPEC assumes that Africa will stick with oil and gas, and it assumes that even uh, in Asia. Uh, it won't electrify very quickly, but places like uh, you know Europe, for example, will electrify. So, are what are we seeing in terms of the Latin America versus Africa versus uh, versus Asia versus the Middle East and so on? So, so what we're seeing what we, we we often see, which is the um, petro states or petro regions, as we call them. So, the Middle East and Eurasia. Um, are behind in everything and not doing very much, um, both in terms of solar wind share of generation and, and in terms of electricity as a share of final demand. Um, I actually think that's going to change quite quickly in the Middle East, what it's worth. But anyway, um, but, but they are definitely at the back of the pack. Um, but but within we're seeing them, you know, the more forward looking parts of the uh, of the emerging markets, most notably uh, uh, Southeast Asia, but also South Asia. Um, are, 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 well, Southeast Asia leapfrog, as I say, um, 
the uh, the the Europe and US in terms of electricity as, as a share of final energy demand, and, and South Asia is not far behind. But they're just changing; they're, they're deploying this technology very quickly. And incidentally, the reason why it's not rocket science, um, Asia doesn't have a lot of oil and gas. Oil and gas is an end-use technology, most of it, a and oil in particular, and um, therefore there's a huge incentive on these folks to electrify because then they can increase their energy um, independence and reduce their dependency. And they're basically using sun plus local coal to make electricity and then electrifying everything. And that's, you know, why wouldn't you? I, I want to end our inter interview with that point because I've been looking at what's going on in, uh, in Southeast Asia and South Asia. And governments increasingly are adopting specific policies to electrify end use so that they can reduce uh, imports mm -hmm. of oil and gas. And the reason yep. for that is that the uh, the imports require foreign currency. And why give your money to uh, an exporting country when you can generate your own electricity and then you know make the technology or buy it cheap uh, yep. on the demand side? And are, are we likely to see that in the global south, more countries adopting those policies? No, yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, you know, because it works. And and you, you, you take a look over your shoulder at your neighbor, and they are electrifying more rapidly than you are. They've got um, people who've got higher quality of life. And you, 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 you know, you kick out the people who are blocking it and, and replace it with people who can do something about it. I mean, and I think that's what's going to start to happen now across the... Um, across the uh, global markets, sorry, across global sales.